Hi, how are you doing? I'll be really brief. I want to talk about 5156 real quick, Lima's bill, about the stun guns. Um, there's been two states recently that have pretty much declared the laws of prohibit of stun guns unconstitutional. Most recently was today in New Jersey, where both the state court and the AG conceded that the New Jersey law uh, banning stun guns was unconstitutional. Um, so that's that. Um, also want to talk about um, 5345. Um, you know, no one's looking to be a hero here. Those that are concealed carry weapons holders know for a fact that they're not going to go into a situation where they're not going to have a favorable outcome. They're not going to go running into a firefight. They're going to get the, they're going to secure themselves and they're going to secure those around themselves. They're not going to go be a hero and jump through a door. That's just a bullying this fact. Um, the other thing is, is if you create an arbitrary gun-free zone right here on the floor, the only way prohibiting people from bringing guns into it is to physically stop them. Creating words to describe an area is not going to actually stop bad people from doing things. If they're going to want to get into that area, they're going to get there regardless if there's a sign on the wall or some other arbitrary obstacle. Unless you create a physical barrier, nothing's going to stop them. Um, so, um, also want to talk about magazine bans in Massachusetts and Connecticut that I've been referred to. Um, magazine in Connecticut do not actually ban magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. As long as you had those magazines prior to 94 in, in Massachusetts and in Connecticut, when you recently registered them, you could still carry them today. You could actually go into Massachusetts now and buy what's called a pre-banned magazine. So by people saying that magazines in Massachusetts that hold more than 10 rounds is banned is just false. Um, also, so I want to talk about 5345 real quick. 1147.11 um, actually states that um, you're allowed to carry firearm everywhere within the state. So if you create a ban on carrying firearms in school, you're actually creating two laws that contradict each other. Um, that's just a little point right there. Um, I do want to talk about supporting... We do that all the time. That, that's, that's, never, that's never stopped us. <laughs> I um, want to talk about supporting 6039. Um, this bill takes years of case law and consolidates into statutory law. You know, from Mosby and Devine that created like proper reason requirement, and you have Archer vs. Gary where he had to sue the police chief to actually issue a permit, an application, to then get a permit, you know, contradicting to what 114711 held because that was already law ahead of time. So. Then you have the Gadamsky decision, and then most recently, as this past year, there was four people that sued East Providence once again because the chief of police wasn't issuing them a permit. So they had to go to court once again. So this is much needed legislation to bring case law in line with statutory law because it consolidates this. You know, I could go apply, I live in Middletown, I could go apply in Providence, or I could apply in Lincoln. And those are three totally different applications. You know, it should all be standardized. It should all be the same. So regardless of where you live, the same evidence can be used. And it says, you know, as long as you're a suitable person, you shall be granted a permit. Um, also, I want to talk briefly about the 90-day requirement made by the um, AG's office. That was actually case law that was settled in the Gadamsky decision that the court said that 90 days is sufficient evidence, you know, if there was an objection to it, they should have cited it during that case, not now during testimony, because it's sort of moot at this point. So I um, just want to thank you, and if there's any other questions, I could be free to go home. <laughs> thank you. Any questions from Mike?